Yeah, well, I think that's it. I think I think koans, they they look like they're talking to one part of the mind and start opening another part of the mind. Yeah. But I think a lot of art jokes do that. Jokes look like they're going one way and then they mm. there's a banana peel, you know. A lot of meta, a lot of jokes are really. I mean, jokes are about a lot of things. Um, not all of them savory, but um, but a lot of the jokes are really about a comment on the way we we make up the world and think it's real, and, and that exploding that is really nice. So, <coughs> David, like one of our traditions in in Sushin, when Dave and I teach together a lot, and. Uh, is that his, at the end of the night, he tells a joke. Um, sometimes he tells the same one. <laughs> he always tells a joke at the end of the night because somehow it, it changes things, you know. And we get, we take ourselves so seriously and we don't realize we already have it. And a joke, in a good sense, can say, oh, it's already here. Jokes often that that sense of striving they take it away and re you realize you've already got it um, what you wanted. You know. I fate, I, for some reason, a fate, one that came to me recently. I, st I was been thinking about bats. <laughs> Why am I thinking about that? <laughs> because um, I remember this person who, um, when she, when I asked her about her childhood, she would be attacked by giant bats as soon as you asked her. And otherwise she was a completely sane, functioning person, you know. But if she started to talk about her childhood, she'd get them off me, get them off me. And so it was very dramatic, <laughs> sort of poignant. And you didn't know what to do about it, because she wanted to explore some things in her childhood. And so I thought, you know, that seems to be like, since I wasn't aware of the bats in the room, and I was in the same room, it, it seemed to be a mapping problem. <laughs> she was like interpreting some feel feelings that came in, <coughs> in a visual form for her. You know, so yeah. pretty classic. You know, it's just like what life is. What the, you know, human tricks. What the mind. What the hamsters do when they're running the show. You know, the hamsters on the treadmills. So, um, and I was thinking about that as, and then I I remember this other story about you know, a friend told me where who's a great explorer of consciousness and he'd taken um, ayahuasca uh, and under a shaman's guidance and and, uh, and he'd met these giant bats <laughs> and, uh, and the bats had sort of sat him down and said, well, we've got some things to tell you. <laughs> and and we're in this other dimension. And, and, and they explained the whole universe to him and what everything was about and how they'd been really secretly running the show and yeah. in charge and like what everything meant. And, and, uh, and he was like astonished, you know, like, wow, the secret of it all, you know. And then he came back and became aware of ordinary reality and he told the shaman, the, this is in the Amazon, he tells the shaman uh, the story and the shaman about, well, oh, these giant bats, I met them. And, they were in charge of everything, and they, they really told me and explained everything, and it made so much sense. And the shaman said, Oh, they always say that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I love that joke because it's sort of, is it real? Is it not real? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it tells how, you know, we're always in that situation of, of oh, they always say that. <laughs> and the, the Dalai Lama has a joke just like that about um, somebody's, you know, the Tibetans have a, the Tulku system, which is the kind of gifted child program where they go and, and um, somebody has a dream about that this a great Lama has been reborn in a village and there's a remarkable kid in the village and so they trot out all the, the accoutrements of the dead Lama and other accoutrements that look the same, and that's, you know, if the kids um, 
going to enter their program, the kid chooses the, the, the accoutrements, the, the bead, meditation beads, or the, the things belonging to the old, the, the deceased Lama, who, of whom he is believed to be a reincarnation. And so, um, and this stuff's kind of, you know, kind of interesting. It's a great dramatic story about how you came to be a meditation teacher, you know. And um, uh, your past life resume, as one of them described it to me. You know. <laughs> My past life resume. Was very, <laughs> he, he was, that was his joke. And the Dalai Lama made a joke about it, where people said, well, you know, do you believe in that stuff? To the, and Dalai Lama said, well, it's accurate about, only accurate about 50% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'm in the other 50%. <laughs> 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 so that's it. And again, it's that, you know. <laughs> the mind keeps trying to grasp an explanation and fix on things. And, mm -hmm. and actually, all the time, this person's dancing and saying, what is that? Just go and eat your eyes. Mm -hmm. And the joke actually allows the dance to go. Mm -hmm.